Thanks for joining us. I'm Terry Brewer. Lynn Brooks will join us in just a moment. It is Election Day in Alabama. Voters are hitting the polls for the primary. They're choosing a Republican presidential nominee and candidates for several state and local races. We'll have more on the presidential race in just a moment. But first, we start in Tuscaloosa County, where WVUA's Lynn Brooks joins us live with a look at how local voting has been going today. Lynn. Well, hi there. We're at the Spayberry Education Center off of Rice Mine Road in Tuscaloosa County. We've seen a few voters trickle in on this very warm Tuesday afternoon, some trying to rush in and cast their ballots right as they're getting off work. Alabama Secretary of State Beth Chapman saying today she predicted about a fourth of Alabama voters would go to the polls today. Our cameras were out at the Foster's Firehouse today and also Carroll's Creek Baptist Church where voters there told us chief among their concerns, the economy, and also policy coming out of Washington, D.C. Uh, the economy. We have got people in Washington that don't look out for people, you and me. They're looking out for the state. And it hasn't changed, and it's not going to change until the people vote them out of office and take a chance on getting somebody that'll look out for the regular people. If they can get people that make good policy, we might can uh, exist for a little longer. And remember, Alabama's home team will have extensive coverage of today's election. Starting tonight at 7 p.m., you will see results scrolling across your television screen. We will be updating those minute by minute. You can also go to WVUATV.com for a list of the latest results. Of course, tonight at 10, a special edition of WVUA News at 10. And you want to keep it with your home team because we're bringing you unique home team coverage of all of tonight's results. I'll join you again live at 6 o'clock. For now, live in Tuscaloosa County, I'm Lynn Brooks, WVUA News. All right, thank you, Lynn. Now, here's some information if you're still planning to go out and vote this evening. Now, according to the state of Alabama official election center, each voter should have one form of identification available when they vote. Examples include a government-issued photo ID or a utility bill with a name and address. Also, remember, polls do close at 7 tonight for a complete look at your county's ballot. You can still log on to WVWATV.com, then click Numbers and Links. Well, one of the most closely watched races in Tuscaloosa County is the Republican candidate for probate judge. Tuscaloosa County Sheriff Ted Sexton is facing off against County Commissioner Don Wallace. Both candidates say accessibility to the county commission and courthouse needs to be improved. They also say changes are needed in the corrections program. Sexton and Wallace, Wallace cast their ballots earlier today, and now it's a waiting game. And also continuing on your election watch, Alabama Republicans are also choosing the party's nominee for Supreme Court Chief Justice. Incumbent Chuck Malone is facing former Chief Justice Roy Moore and former Alabama Attorney General Charlie Graddock. Malone is a former Tuscaloosa County Circuit Judge. Governor Robert Bentley appointed Malone to Chief Justice after Sue Bell Cobb stepped down. Moore was elected Chief Justice back in 2000 but removed from office for refusing a federal judge's order to remove a Ten Commandments monument from the state judicial building. Graddock was Alabama Attorney General from 1979 to 1987. Also on your election watch, Republican presidential candidates are fighting for the 84 delegates up for grabs between Alabama and Mississippi. Mitt Romney says the Republican par Party is doomed if it doesn't choose a nominee before the convention. Rick Santorum is coming off a big win in the Kansas caucus. Political experts say Newt Gingrich needs to do well in the South to keep his hopes alive. Ron Paul hasn't campaigned over the last week in Alabama or Mississippi. American Samoa and Hawaii are also holding caucuses tonight. FEMA has announced a new partnership to strengthen their recovery efforts following disasters. Tuscaloosa Mayor Walt Maddox was on hand in Washington, D.C. for the announcement today. FEMA has joined with AmeriCorps to form FEMA Corps. 
Officials say the members will be devoted solely to FEMA disaster response and recovery efforts. At the meeting today, Maddox said in the 321 days since the April 27th tornado, the resolve of the people in Tuscaloosa was amplified by the tens of thousands of volunteers who helped rebuild the city. This new partnership between FEMA and the Corporation of National and Community Service will be crucial in supporting cities, counties, and state governments. I commend FEMA and CNCS for understanding that to effectively respond to a crisis, we have to extend beyond our political, geographical, and even, yes, bureaucratic, bureaucratic boundaries to provide resources and make them all available for the citizens that we serve. I believe this partnership will do just that. FEMA Corps is open for young people ages 18 to 24 years old. The first members will begin serving in August, and the program is expected to reach full capacity within 18 months. To learn more about FEMA Corps or to apply, go to our website, then click Numbers and Links. New for you at 5 o'clock, after waiting more than 60 years, a local World War II veteran finally received his much-deserved Prisoner of War Medal. Sergeant Marion E. Fowler was honored at the Tuscaloosa VA Medical Center today. Officials say Fowler was captured during a mission in Austria in 1945. He and his platoon became German prisoners of war. But due to an oversight 66 years ago, Fowler never received his prisoner of war medal. But his grandson, Jerry Head, grew up hearing his grandfather's stories and decided it was time his grandfather finally received his award. Officials at the VA Medical Center say once they heard Fowler's story, they wanted to do whatever it took to get him his award and to honor him. I just overcome was gratitude. <laughs> it means a great deal to everyone here at the Medical Center to honor him for his service to our country, especially our POWs and our World War II veterans, because they mean so much to our country and we wouldn't be here with the freedoms we have today if it weren't for men like Mr. Fowler. And officials who presented Fowler the award say his conduct while a prisoner of war reflected great credit upon himself, his unit, and the entire United States Army.